Good evening, everybody. My name is Joe Campos and welcome to Cadena Shire Council's Home Property and Personal Safety um, event. I am Council's Community Safety Officer and also your MC for tonight, even though it's a short presentation. Um, I'd like to thank you very much for registering and attending the event. I'd now like to hand over to Council's um, Mayor, Brett Owen, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Joe, for the introduction. And uh, I just want to thank you, Joe, personally uh, for your efforts in organising uh, these forums. It is appreciated. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, to begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the country of which we meet, the Bunurong and Rundri people, and pay my respects to their elders, both past and present. I also want to acknowledge the presence of uh, some of my councillor colleagues. Uh, I do note we've got um, Councillor Tammy Radford and Councillor Jack Kwasik also uh, at tonight's session. So welcome, councillors. I also want to acknowledge uh, Victoria Police representatives joining us this evening. So I do acknowledge uh, Acting Inspector Ivan Petrunik, Cardinia Local Area Commander. Welcome, Ivan. Also, Leading Senior Constable Frank Bailey. Um, I know these two gentlemen very well. Uh, for those people who don't know, uh, I'm a serving and current serving uh, police member that's currently on leave while I've undertaken the, the mayoral role. Unfortunately, I do go back to policing very soon when my term expires, but welcome both Frank and Ivan uh, to tonight's session. But also I would like to welcome everyone listening in tonight. Um, this is our first community workshop as part of Community Safety Month. The month of October is Community Safety Month. And I understand we've got uh, close to 40 attendees tonight, and that is fantastic to see that amount of people interested in tonight's subject. So over the coming weeks, uh, Council will be hosting a number of free online sessions covering a broad range of topics, including online safety awareness, bushfire preparedness, alcohol and drug use, and emergency planning. These workshops are a great opportunity for us to come together and learn more about community safety and how to better prepare ourselves for emergencies as well. Tonight's session will focus on home, property and personal safety. I am looking forward to hearing from leading Senior Constable Frank Bailey shortly and learning more about how we can make our homes and workplaces and neighbourhoods safer. Community safety is a key priority for Cardinia Shire Council. We're committed to working in partnership with other agencies and organisations on this very important issue. But it's important to remember that community safety requires a whole of community response. Everyone deserves to feel safe at home, school, work and in public places so they can participate fully in community life. And it's up to all of us to work together to build a safe community right here in Cardinia Shire. I will now hand over to a good friend of mine, uh, Leading Senior Constable Frank Bailey, to start this session. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mayor Owen. Thank you, Joe. Uh, I work in, I'm Senior Constable Frank Bailey, Leading Senior Constable Frank Bailey. I work in the space of crime prevention of the Proactive Policing Unit. The unit also consists of youth resource and specialist officers, community engagement coordinators, a district's firearms officer, and a media coordinator. I like to say that crime prevention plays such a large role and being proactive cannot be emphasised enough. Thank you for registering for the workshop and we'll get on with it. So tonight I'll be discussing on the next slide. Securing your home, absence from residence, preventing motor vehicle theft, personal safety, we'll touch on lost property, reporting a crime. There'll be some resource, there'll be a resource page, we'll have some links. And of course, we'll have questions at the end. So it's, importance can't be emphasised enough on the simple and basic things like locking your house. Uh, the suggestions are to lock all your windows and doors, even when you're at home. Unlock side and rear doors and windows are most common entry points for burglars. Quite often, and I'm able to, I suppose, give some insight being in the job for over 20 years. Quite often our houses are being burgled and it's not through forcing doors and windows up to 60 to 70 percent of homes uh, are broken into simply from unlocked doors and unlocked windows. 
I usually give presentations and suggest uh, to most people, obviously having grandchildren and children and uh, adolescents children, the uh, doors and windows are not always locked in the evenings and overnight. Uh, the best suggestion I can give is if someone does uh, do a round of the uh, doors and the windows to make sure they are locked and it's as simple as that. You should install good quality locks on all your doors and windows and if you've got deadlocks just remember to disengage them when you're in the house. They should only be engaged when you're out. Uh, it's a safety, uh, a safety problem obviously trying to get out of the house in case of emergency like in a fire. You can consider other security measures too, uh, such as security screen doors, uh, sensor lights and alarm systems and CCTV. We did have at one stage uh, offenders going around kicking in front doors um, and simply going from house to house and this is during the day, this is a while ago, going from house to house they picked on the doors that were didn't have security doors. So people that had security doors then they, were, uh, then they weren't targeted by these particular sort of people. Closed circuit TV, uh, they've come down quite a lot in price now and if you're going to spend money you should look at the resolution and get the best resolution possible. One of the great features now of CCTV and the cameras is that they have sensors built into them. Anyone that set trips off those sensors, you can have set up that your mobile device, your iPad or your phone is notified and then you're able to see what's on the camera, even to the point where you are able to, uh, to talk and to listen to what's going on. Uh, a good idea is not to hide the keys on your property, particularly under mats and under, uh, under plant pot plants. Uh, consider leaving them with a family uh, or even a neighbour if you trust the neighbour. Uh, another good idea is to lock your mailbox. We're getting quite a lot of theft from mailboxes and a lot of thefts of parcels being delivered. Uh, you don't want your personal documents being stolen and the possibility obviously of ID theft. As far as parcels are concerned, there are a lot of uh, uh, manufacturers now that actually make oversized letter boxes that parcels can be uh, held securely in. Also a good idea of course is to keep your garages and your sheds and similar storage facilities locked. Access to these sorts of uh, garage or your, your tool shed is obviously they can get hand tools or they can get garden tools and they can be used uh, to help break into uh, to your property. Maintenance is, maintenance is an important uh, thing to follow as well as far as uh, as far as your home. Houses that looked uh, you know, uh, 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 need repairing are uh, kept very untidy outside. They don't look like there's anyone in there of, that's proud of their place that owns the place. So being uh, tidy, having a house that, uh, that's well presented gives the impression that someone cares of that house and they're, uh, they're a guardian of that house, not wanting criminal activity and uh, keeping, having the, uh, the criminal I suppose consider well if it's unkept, untidy then they don't really care if, if someone you know goes to break into it. So you've got to send that, uh, that clear signal to these people, have pride in the place. So you keep all structures including fencing and walkways clear and in good repair. Keep the area clean and free from garbage. Keep shrubs and trees pinned, trimmed back from windows, doors and walkways. Uh, it's a good idea if, if people that walk along your footpaths have clear visual, uh, sight through your property because they can also act as your gardens and, uh, and ward off any uh, criminals that might have uh, criminal intentions. Next. So for an example in this slide, you can see that the, uh, the one above is, uh, is quite bushy. The uh, same house below, all the shrubs have been trimmed. So quite easily you're able to see into the property below and see if there's any untoward activity happening. There is a, uh, there is a concept of, uh, it's called uh, crime prevention through environmental design and these are some of the principles of that uh, concept where you can have natural surveillance from, uh, from the public. Criminals 
in general don't want to be seen to be breaking into someone's house or doing uh, their criminal activity. So this is a prevention method. Uh, the one above, of course, was uh, hide, shows plenty of hiding, uh, hiding spots, and obviously it's been trimmed heavily on the one below. This is a good example too. You could imagine if uh, someone had gotten over that fence, uh, they can do basically anything they would like to. No one from our outside uh, can see and what, know what's going on. It's more than likely though, I, I would say if you had a fence like this, you'd probably be having um, a dog or two over the other side. But you've got to just be aware that it's nice to have the privacy, but you're also making it private where uh, offenders can be in your yard and not seen by anyone. Here I've got a, an example. This is something interesting that I actually observed at my place. Uh, we get off often asked about the uh, about the doggy doors and there is some good quality doggy doors that have locking features on them and this one's just a basic one but uh, you can see on the left hand side it's only a small door and the size of the dog that um, that we have at this place which will uh, we can watch come out of that door it's only a jack russell so the door's quite small and uh, my grandchildren were playing hide and seek in the backyard and I watched uh, my oldest one. Now he's uh, he's 10 years old and he uh, climbs through that door quite easily. So it's not impossible for, um, for criminals to have uh, young recruits that will do this and, and, and open up the house inside. Absence from residence. Now we have these uh, forms at the police stations and what it's about is that you record with the police that you're being on holidays and your absence from your residence. This uh, information is uh, kept at the police station and in case of any break-ins of the house or even damage to the house, uh, we have the contact details of that person that's on holidays. It's also a good idea, of course, to let your neighbours know uh, that, that you're away also. Um, in doing that, um, you can have a neighbour that can park occasionally in your driveway, make it look like someone's uh, is still there. It's a good idea to cancel uh, any newspaper subscriptions. And if you're going to be away for a long time, if someone can't remove your mail, it might be a good idea to redirect your mail too or have it kept at the post office until you get back. Um, a lot of people can have babysitters or sorry, house sitters to uh, look after their homes while they're away. Uh, there's a lot of tips there. Turn down the volume of your telephone so it doesn't hear it ringing out for a long time. Those are people that still have telephones, home telephones. You can always set timers for, uh, for radios and lights to work uh, during the day and night. Um, another recent tip too with uh, social media, a lot, a lot of people like to uh, advertise on Facebook and social media that they're away and showing photos that they're away as well. So you could imagine that alerts some people that you don't want to alert, but uh, no one's living at the home at the moment. Uh, the ab absence from residence, you can, uh, you can see there's a link here and you can also uh, jump on the police website, Victoria Police website. Uh, for the uh, forms, you can fill them out online, or you can print them out, and uh, and and then take them to your uh, to your police station. I believe this uh, this presentation will be available to people, and they'll be able to uh, to hit those links uh, from this presentation. So, any uh, any any people that are away from their homes, um, I urge them to for a, for a, a certain amount of time. In holidaying, I urge them to uh, to register themselves with the uh, absence from residence. <laughs> motor, motor vehicle theft. Now, this um, is a fairly uh, a fairly significant crime. It's certainly one that uh, inconveniences a lot of people. Uh, we do have a lot of opportunity on opportunist thieves now. Uh, it's easier with the modern cars for thieves to steal the car using the keys. Hot wiring cars now becomes a lot more difficult with the uh, modern cars. So 
to steal a car and to steal the keys, uh, the thefts obviously occur around the workplace or around the private residence. So it's uh, quite important to take steps to protect your car from this. Uh, locking all the doors and windows, even when it's parked in the garage, is what's uh, is what's suggested. Even if you leave your car for uh, a short while, we do have instances from reports, uh, people uh, starting their car, it's in the driveway or just in the open garage. Uh, they forget something, they just go inside to their house. Uh, the garage doors open, they come back and occasionally their car goes missing straight away. Depends how busy it is outside on, on the streets. So you should keep all uh, all your keys and your spares, especially in a secure place. Don't leave them in the car in the garage. And a lot of people do do that. Uh, keep your car, if you, if you have to park it outside in the driveway, try to keep it in a well-lit area. There's also measures that you can take, uh, engine immobilizers and car alarms. Uh, a lot of cars come with them. If it's not already fitted, I'd suggest to, uh, to get the likes of those. Uh, you can consider using a steering wheel lock. Now, this is probably uh, older technology, but it's not that bad a technology. Uh, you can consider in the older cars, some cars uh, you can install a, a, a bonnet lock. And in GPS is becoming a lot more popular in tracking uh, cars nowadays. And there's those aftermarket ones that you can put on and you can track a car through the app. And some of them actually have an immobilizer built in so you can actually immobilize a car whilst it's being driven around. A good idea too, uh, not to leave uh, your name and address on key tags on your, your vehicles, particularly like your house keys as well. Uh, could be a good idea, use a mobile phone number instead uh, and try to avoid leaving details uh, of your residence inside the car, like registration papers, not the registration papers are that popular now, but uh, quite often uh, registration papers left in glove boxes alerts the, uh, uh, the, the thief that uh, there's no one home because the car's parked in the next suburb or in the, uh, at the train station. Uh, bicycles and motorcycles and scooters, we still get, motorcycles are still fairly popularly uh, stolen. Uh, they should, all these should be parked in, in a locked garage. We do have quite occasional bicycles and motorcycles stolen from garages where the garage door has been left open for an hour or two. And the residents, the people living in the house will be inside the house. So like we say, they're opportunists, they see a push bike in the uh, bicycle inside the garage and they'll just quickly nick it and then take off. So you can secure those, you can do, I myself have a quite a good bike and it, it hangs up in a rack in the garage and I put a lock on it and in the garage door is always locked anyway, but uh, I still do that as a measure. Uh, <clears throat> on motorbikes now you can have so many different uh, different devices you can get the U locks that go through the wheels or even a lock that goes into the disc pad and it's an alarm lock so as soon as it moves uh, the alarm goes off and there's a lot of those uh, heavy reinforced chains with the uh, plastic coating on them so it doesn't scratch too much. Uh, a good idea is to make sure your bicycle is identifiable. Now most bicycles, I've got a I don't know about the carbon bicycles, but most bikes have an identifying number under the crank, so under the pedals. Uh, it's not a bad idea though to engrave um, identifiable features like your uh, or your yours or your father's driver's license number, uh, and that's preceded by a V, and then the number. Now your driver's license number is something that you keep forever. Uh, even though you might lose your license or you hand your license, it still belongs to you, and police know that they find property. Uh, even power tools with a V number and uh, written on it, and they know straight away they can look that person up and then uh, hopefully find the owner of that stolen or lost property. Of course, it's a good idea to get insurance for any of these items because uh, you can use as many measures as you like and you can prevent uh, thefts and crime from happening you know, up to 99% of the time, but uh, you might lock a, a, a 
a bicycle somewhere, but if you don't lock it to something, then the lock and the bike can disappear as well. Or someone might have a a cordless uh, a cordless circular saw or grinder, and they can uh, remove a, a chain or lock as well. So you mitigate it right at the end of the day. Consider getting uh, your items insured. Personal safety. Um, we do have, unfortunately, a, a fairly uh, high incidence of, of street crime. Um, it has increased over over the years. It does waver. It, go, it does go up and down depending on uh, on how we're going with with preventative measures and uh, and processing of offenders. Um, most thefts in public occur when valuables are clearly visible and if you distract or leave your possessions unattended attractive items or for thieves uh, include uh, of course money, wallets, handbags, valuable electronic uh, items such as phones, uh, iPads, your earphones, the uh, uh, earphones I think they call them, the Apple ones they're very popular um, and computers of course are, are attracted to thieves. Uh, unfortunately, we have quite a lot of the young people being uh, victims of our crimes and it's not to say that the young people are the offenders uh, in a lot of instances as well. And we do have a lot of kids that uh, like to use their mobile phones, have their mobile phones in public. Um, it's not uncommon that if you if you flash it around, uh, they might have their, uh, their earphones on. They could be wearing their Nike runners or some other brand name runners and uh, and some of the clothing and they're all uh, items of targets that uh, that's targeted by a lot of thieves. Um, if you are wearing your uh, earphones you should keep one ear free. It's not a good idea to wear earphones completely blocking out all side, outside noises. You're not aware of what's happening around you and even when you walk you uh, and particularly for the early try to be assertive and, and walk with confidence. Be aware of the uh, of the people who appear suspicious around you. Uh, take only what you need to take when you go out, and that's including the amount of cash that you might carry on you as well. Um, keep hold of your valuables at all times. Never leave them unattended. Never sit down at uh, at cafes, although COVID is not allowing us to do that at the moment. Those sorts of crimes, of course, uh, do go down quite a bit in these. Uh, in these environments, but uh, leaving items on the table, on the chair next to you, hanging handbags on the back of uh, of your chairs, uh, the opportunist thief knows these, and, uh, and 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 it's just a danger leaving them like that. You uh, handbags over your shoulders. You should face the opening, even towards you. Uh, when you do sit down, put your handbag um, on your lap or maybe uh, have the strap. If it's on the on the ground, you have this you have your foot weaved into the strap. Um, when you're doing your shopping, you come back, uh, you're carrying the groceries, put all your valuables in the car first, your handbag, uh, your phone, those sorts of things in your car first before putting your groceries in. Don't leave them in the uh, in the trolley and leave them there for last. Um, Place money and purse wallets away immediately uh, after a transaction. This is when we're talking about um, at, at cash registers. Uh, and keep val just basically keep valuables away when not in use. Uh, if you've been a victim of theft, do not attempt to retrieve your valuables and, re and report it immediately. Uh, your safety is the most important consideration. At the end of the day, uh, an item, if it's worth uh, $50, $100, if it's worth $2,000, um, it's still not enough to put yourself in danger of being hurt. Okay, ATM security. Using an ATM is generally safe and it's a convenient way uh, to go uh, to get money or withdraw money, but there are some ste steps that you should take to protect yourself. Um, there's a lot of ATMs now. They're located inside buildings. Uh, that is uh, a good way to. All the good ATMs to to use. But if you even if you go inside and there's people around that you feel unsafe with, uh, 
and look suspicious. Simply just don't use the um, uh, the ATM. Now, when you do use the ATM, you just check to see if it's been tampered with. Um, we will discuss in a moment about uh, card skimming. Uh, when you use the ATM, make sure you cover your fingers when you're pressing the uh, the pin numbers into it. Never write your pin down either. Um, quite often people will write the pin down and it'll be in their wallet, it will be in their uh, their uh, purse and that's where the ATM card is as well. Uh, it's a good idea only to withdraw the amount of money that you need, so you're mitigating the amount of money that could be stolen from you. Um, when you put your card in, if it doesn't, obviously if it's not uh, returning your card, uh, you'd want to contact uh, the uh, in financial institution, uh, inform them about the um, about that particular uh, ATM. It can be, I know I've used an ATM machine and it took my card and there was no particular reason, but um, then I was at the belief that it actually had taken uh, a few cards, so it was actually a fault with that machine. There's a lot of ATMs too. They're um, they're located inside shopping centres and there's uh, quite a few people around, so that's probably a more secure one to use than one that's uh, outside, um, isolated outside the building. So when we're talking about uh, ATM skimming, on the next slide, oh, sorry, ATM um, skimming, card skimming. Now there's a lot of um, a lot of ingenious thieves out there that can uh, can manipulate an ATM machine. You can see on this slide. Now the, the one on the left is a normal fascia. It has a, a, a light. Sometimes these faces you might have seen them. They're a round green uh, plastic um, attachment where your card uh, goes into. And being round, I thought that was a good idea. It's going to be hard to sort of simulate that and do what they're doing on the second slide where you can see that they actually put a whole cover over the original slide. Now this cover that they put on there, that'll have some electronic um, uh, electronic circuitry in it and that will be able to read the magnetic information off your card. So that'll be the, the that what identifies it as that card. Once they copy that information and fabricate that onto a blank card, they basically have your uh, ATM card or your um, your credit card. Now what they don't have is the CSV number on it and they don't have, which is the security number on it, and they don't have the PIN number. So always when you use an ATM machine, where you put the uh, card in, just give it a rattle and, and, and have see if it's a, bit, a little bit loose, if it's not solid. If, if you're in doubt, just simply don't use that um, that ATM. Now, I know we've had reports, we don't get this a lot in Australia, and I was uh, doing quite a few presentations and telling just that, and uh, it was brought to our notice that uh, not long ago that there was actually an ATM that was, um, or quite a few ATMs have been tampered with, There's from Bansdale to Berwick, I think it was, there was quite a few along. Uh, the highway and quite a few towns, so I um, sort of had to eat my words when uh, when that came out. But it still doesn't happen a great deal. It happens a lot overseas. But anyway, um, you still want to treat it as it's possible that it can uh, that can happen here. If you do see the machine has been tampered with, and you do know that it's that, that it's it's got one of these uh, devices stuck on it, uh, just notify the police immediately and um, and also the institution. So the PIN number, now there's a lot of ingenious uh, ways that they try to record this too, from putting small pinhole cameras. Now you can see where that, uh, that arrow is pointing to. There's actually a little camera sitting in there and it's pointing straight at the, uh, at the numbers on the, um, on the machine. So unless you're covering it with your other hand, the machine that skims the card and gets that information on it and then records the PIN number being put on there, um, they can fabricate a card and then use that PIN number and empty out the accounts and it's quite easily done like that and it's quite commonly uh, it's done like that. So it's, uh, the, this camera though can be still uh, attached even closer to where, the, uh, to where the, the numbers are. Some of the numbers if you've seen on the new machines, they're inside so they've got a hood over them but uh, I've seen even a camera that's been pushed all the way inside there if there's a bit of a gap that they can fit it in because 
the pinhole cameras don't take up. They're not very good resolution, but they're still good enough to see which numbers, um, which numbers that you're putting into your um, to your, uh, your your identification for your card. All right, uh, lost property, um, quite common. Lost in property and stolen property. So you can report lost property. You can call the police assistance line. Now this uh, this number one three one triple four, um, or you can submit an online report. Uh, the police now have this particular reporting number for basically what we might call cold crimes. Um, so. When you do uh, do call them, obviously having unique features uh, and markings on any property that you got will, uh, will make it identifying it uh, easier. Um, makes and models and brands. Uh, a lot of people, and I know I have uh, have so many TVs at home now, but uh, most of the items I have got, I've actually recorded their serial numbers, and uh, and I have it on file. All the uh, items I have, I've got the serial numbers. Um, and they won't, of course, know the circumstances of how the items were lost. So those forms can be filled out, like I said, uh, online or by contacting that uh, the report number. Um, th things like keys and wallets and, and and purses and all that, they can be reported if they're of high regard or sentimental value. Uh, keys, it's very difficult. You will find that most police stations, they will have um, a box of keys of people that have handed in um, to that station and we would probably just empty out that box every year or every couple of years and it does get quite big and it do have success stories. Some people come in, ask if they have keys been handed in, we show them the box and they go through it and uh, they love to find their keys because uh, the modern keys with all the remotes and everything in them, uh, any theft, the mobilise everything, uh, high value, two or three or four hundred dollars to replace, it's not uncommon. Now in general, reporting a crime. Of course our emergency phone line triple zero uh, for police, fire or ambulance. Now you're encouraged to call triple zero, zero when you require an immediate response. Um, this is basically when a crime is happening or of course there is injuries and you need uh, you need assistance straight away. Um, if English is not the first language, uh, you can call triple zero and tell them your language and they'll uh, they'll interconnect with a interpreter of that uh, of that language. And also there is facilities there for uh, people uh, are impaired hearing. Now, if you don't need police uh, to attend in an emergency, you can uh, contact that same phone number 131444 in submitting or submitting an online report. This is for non-urgent crimes. This is what we might call cold crimes, cold theft, uh, cold burglary, um, property damage that has happened, the offenders are gone. Generally, if the offenders are you, if the offenders there or you can see the offenders, that's obviously when you would ring triple zero. Uh, also, you can see lost property and general police inquiries can be made uh, to that line as well. And it's amazing. Sometimes we do get people ringing up triple zero and asking, uh, you know, if uh, if they can report their dog lost or uh, asking some questions that um, just leaves you sort of a bit staggered uh, and they're tying up obviously our emergency lines. Um, in the event of a burglary, obviously report, it's important to report that as early as possible uh, to ensure the best opportunity to locate the offenders and to recover stolen property uh, and help keep everyone safe. Um, with the amount of crimes, there is quite a lot of uh, evidence that we need to collect and we need to collect it quickly before the evidence becomes destroyed. Uh, that's so much important in case of um, burglary and uh, robberies and the higher end uh, uh, crimes. Um, if the incident is currently in progress or just occurred, offenders still there in your home or in the area, find a safe place and call triple zero. Remember the safety of yourself and others is more important 
um, than trying to prevent uh, a burglary. And when we say trying to prevent a burglary, that's obviously trying to stop uh, the offender red-handed. If your car has been stolen, also remember to notify your insurance company uh, immediately uh, and contact any suspicious activity. Uh, there's so many uh, methods that the criminals will use. We have criminals that will uh, attend houses, particularly early residents, uh, wanting to perform uh, jobs on their houses, fixing roofs, gutters, all that sort of stuff. They can be quite pushy and uh, try and convince the owners that if they give them some money, they'll go get some equipment um, or some um, some items that they need to have replaced and you never see them again. Uh, we have scammers obviously that come uh, door to door. You have people that will knock and ask if they've seen their dog or if uh, if Peter or John Smith or someone lives at this address, uh, that should alert you that this person could be casing places, seeing if anyone's home. And then uh, once no one's home, obviously they try to break in. Um, so Crime Stoppers is a very important uh, stakeholder and partner with Victoria Police. Uh, the phone number is there, the 1800 000. You can contact this number when obviously, and also when it's not an emergency. We get a lot of calls and get a lot of contacts through Crime Stoppers at the police stations when we get uh, informed of activity of, of, uh, of drugs or suspected drugs uh, in residence or, or anywhere. Uh, they can re, re they can be reported to and you can remain anonymous, which is a good feature. Um, so we encourage uh, everyone uh, to contact Crime Stoppers. If you're concerned about alerting who you are, please contact Crime Stoppers. And you can even uh, contact them in relation to Hoon activity as well in your area. OK, so we have a resources uh, page. Now, uh, residential crime prevention information kits. On our website, we have quite a few fact sheets and information kits, security kits. Uh, those uh, links there, the residential crime prevention information kit, that's a very uh, good resource information. It's in regards to preventing a lot of the stuff that we've uh, spoken about and more, even as far as um, nuisance calls, um, scams, door-to-door uh, -door salesmen, the people that come and uh, obviously promise to uh, repair your house and do service on your house. So there's a whole swag of information in there. You can simply go to that, download it and, uh, and, and print it out at home. There's also a security, security assessment guide for residents. Now this is quite handy. This is a fairly detailed uh, audit uh, guide. Uh, it's a, a, a basically a tick and flick and it opens up your eyes to things that you can improve at your house and things that you may be missing um, that you that you can go out and uh, obviously install at your house. The residential alarm security assessment for uh, uh, apartments, sorry, for security assessment. They're the same basically as the tick and flick, but they're obviously more aimed towards apartments. Um, and for owner corporation committees, there's also one there for that as well. There's also a, a bicycle security brochure. So that's a fact sheet and there's quite a few fact sheets on our website in uh, particular crime uh, preventing theft from motor vehicles. And that's just a fairly big crime that is happening now. We haven't really touched on that, but Number plates are commonly stolen from cars and further crimes are committed with that number plate. Very popular uh, uh, petrol thefts and other crimes that happen where they don't want to be identified. So using false number plates, the ones that they steal, it's very common. And theft from inside motor cars. We get quite a few of those. A lot of uh, car owners become complacent, particularly when they're parking cars in their driveways and out front of their houses. They may leave their cars unlocked. Uh, it's not unusual that some cars do have their garage openers inside them and uh, offenders or thieves will get that and then they get access to the garage and then they have access to stealing whatever's in the garage. The steal, theft of cars from houses that we touched on a bit earlier, uh, needing the keys. If you store 
your keys at home, you should store them where they can't be seen and to encourage these opportunists to sneak into a house. The a scenario that happens um, way too frequently. It's happening a lot less now because a lot of people are becoming a bit more aware. Um, stealing person's uh, remote, getting into the garage, getting through the door that uh, in the modern house between the garage and, and the house. And you've got to ask yourself, where do you store your car keys? Uh, how often are they on the kitchen bench, visible from the windows? uh from the backyard and how often are they on just uh, uh hooks or key hooks so it's not unusual for some residents unfortunately to wake up in the morning and find their cars have been stolen out of the garage um, it happens uh, way too often but like i say though it's happening less and less because uh, people are coming aware through obviously um, programs like this and a lot of uh, crime prevention programs on the media, on TV. Um, yeah, so th that was uh, something that I wanted to mention earlier and emphasise quite a bit. A lot of people will consider that if they leave their keys on kitchen benches, then there's no need for offenders, if they might enter their house, to disturb them in the house. Um, uh, that's a personal preference. I don't um, recommend it, um, but that's my personal preference. And when we talked about security cameras and phones that can be notified when there's someone that moves around in your front yard or your backyard, they're a great device because you can become aware if someone's wandering around in your yard um, and possibly able to prevent that crime. A lot of times these offenders don't want to disturb anyone and a lot of times they get frightened off lights turning on or someone talking or someone seeing them. Um, and in that instance, obviously, if you are a victim of that crime, you need to contact the police straight away. Uh, maybe consider the evidence that might be left um, at the household. And the police in looking after victims and assisting victims have a referral services for victims for counselling um, and uh, help them through any issues that uh, they might suffer from being a victim of those sorts of crime and including robberies. OK, um, all right, so uh, we're just about on time, which is which is great. Um, we do have uh, a question session, which I think Joe is taking care of. Um, but on that screen there, you can see uh, the email address of myself and Steve Butler. Now, Steve Butler is a community uh, engagement coordinator for the Cadinia area. So any questions that you wish to ask, um, if you don't get them through Joe now, um, feel free to contact us uh, on through that email and also uh, because we do a lot of presentations to community groups and retirement villages, um, you can contact either Steve or myself um, and inquire about those once we're back and in, in, in the land of no COVID, whenever that would be, or we're allowed to make those presentations. Uh, I encourage you to contact us and we'll come out and do those presentations and hopefully help the people um, in those communities. So thank you, and I do think we'll be handing it back maybe to Joe. Um, thanks, Frank. Hopefully you can hear me. Yes. Thank you so much uh, for your presentation and attending tonight. So clearly some valuable information for all of us to consider, especially I think in relation to uh, uh, understanding a crime and reporting the crime and the different numbers in which to contact. Um, I think that's pretty valuable. I know that in my role in working with that community, it's certainly one of the main questions that's asked uh, from me. I, I have to apologise, my sincere apologies. Unfortunately, the chat function, which I was hoping to have up and live, 
as we said at the beginning, uh, there's been a technical difficulty. I'm going to put it down to that. I've trialled it and it worked. It's not working now. So I will say that uh, this uh, this session has actually been recorded and a copy of the slide presentation will be uh, provided. If people do have con uh, questions in which to uh, ask you as a result of tonight's presentation, they can either uh, feel free to contact myself or your, your details will be provided as well, Steve's. Um, as I said, my sincere apologies. It would have been good to be able to provide some of those questions to you. Um, I have a question in relation to Crime Stoppers, and it's one of the things that we're clearly trying to promote um, to get that greater awareness out to community is um, even though you have said that the information is is not shared and it is um, and it's kept uh, private, what's the time lag, if you will, or in relation to if I report a crime um, to going out to say a police station? Like how does it work? If I ring Crime Stoppers, how, how does it work um, for a police member to attend, for example? Uh, look, let's see, uh, I'll make sure I'm not muted. The, you can hear me? Yep. Yeah, okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, look, it depends on the crime. Quite often, uh, if, it's, if it's in regards to a house that that, that people are uh, reporting that they think there's drug activity, it has to be sort of triaged somewhat. Um, we don't want it to be misused and to be information that's uh, misleading. Um, quite often, with the likes of uh, where there's drug activity, we'll, we'll probably get more than one report. And so that gives it a bit of um, uh, a bit of credibility. Uh, with other crimes, look, it can happen. It can be within 24 hours if the if there's importance enough there. Um, I'm not sure exactly. I think it takes like it, it takes within like 48 hours. Uh, again, it depends what it is. Obviously, with the likes, of, we have people that report hoon driving. And you've got to appreciate, and, and, and at the moment, the uh, police resources are, fit, are stretched far and wide at the moment. So, have po police to be in a convenient position to have a report of whom driving, and a whom will drive for about two minutes doing his burnouts or whatever he might do, and then he'll disappear. Registrations are great when we have registrations, can we can follow up, and we will follow up with our. Uh, uh, our highway patrols will follow up that sort of thing with the uh, owners of those vehicles. Um, and we love to catch them red hot. I mean, and we do occasionally do catch them red hot. There's many cars that will be um, impounded. I don't know if I didn't mention it before, but there is um, a link to uh, we do have a Facebook page, the iWatch Facebook page for both uh, Cadinia Casey or Cadinia Case and all the um, the the local government areas uh, throughout Victoria, and uh, they're not a bad site to have a look on. You get to see people that are wanted. Um, hopefully, the people that do see that and know the person uh, notify us and helps help help us solve crimes. But it's uh, look we we do get some comments and some of the adverse comments, and I just want to say that. Um, we got sort of under a bit of attack just lately on one of our Facebook pages. You're not necessarily helping the police when you feel that you've got a beef with police, but you do have victims and the victims are the persons that you are helping when you can assist us with our uh, with our inquiries. So in regards to the, the time that it takes, um, it, it depends on like the importance. Um, Obviously, a, a red Holden that does burnouts uh, once or twice is a hard thing for us to ping and to find someone that does it regularly and at certain times of the day, or a person that sees it goes into a particular house, um, or it was all valuable information. And please don't endanger yourself getting valuable information like that. But uh, that's good information for us um, for us to get. So. Have you got any other questions? Because it might be obviously convenient for you to be able to talk and to ask anything else that you have queries on. No, and I think you're, you're right, and, and and that's why it's so imperative to um, to have that slide in relation to the types of crime and and who to call. So Crime Stoppers is an is an avenue, but there's also calling triple zero. 
um, and um, sharing that information and, and educating community um, to actually be able to free up resourcing and um, and I suppose when members will be attending and um, is is quite important. The other question I have is um, Vic Pohl and Council. Uh, we have a, a Safe Communities Partnership Committee of which there are many um, uh, services that attend. Uh, one of our partners is as clearly Vic Pohl and Department of Justice, uh, but also Neighbourhood Watch, uh, another important partner. And clearly we do a lot of dual messaging. So um, I think it's just a bit of a special thanks to, to the likes of Neighbourhood Watch and the work that they do, the, the volunteering work that they do, um, the, the number plates and going out and, and educating community about um, the, the the types of uh, screws that they can actually put on the number plates to have them avoid being stolen um, and the uh, information that they share such as Vic Poll as well and Council in relation to the dual messaging I think is also important. So uh, we have a lot of partners and, um, and as I said once again it's really good to have you here tonight. It's our very first session of eight. Um, this will be uh, shared with everybody. I just want to take this moment to thank you very much for your time um, this evening to everyone who has joined. Thank you. My sincere apologies once again that unfortunately the chat function wasn't working. But if you do have any questions, please feel free to either email myself or uh, Frank. Um, and thank you once again for this evening and we'll conclude tonight's session. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. And thank you. I hope some hope everyone or someone has taken away something from this that uh, that will um, that will enlighten them to the uh, the being proactive in crime preventative. Thank you.